The format of an ANOVA in R is very simple. It's exactly the same as what we use for linear regression in terms of the setup of the model. The only difference is that in the case of an ANOVA, the X factor or the X variable is discontinuous rather than continuous. In order to generate the ANOVA table that we just saw, all we need to do is pass the model into the ANOVA function. In some cases, we need to have the output as an object, and in that case, we use the AOV function. The assumptions of ANOVA should look familiar because they are very similar to the assumptions for the t-test of means. One is that the observations that we make are independent of each other and not correlated. Then the other two assumptions also are familiar, that the samples for each level should be normally distributed. In this case, it means the residuals are normally distributed. And also the homogeneity of variance assumption, that the samples for each level or group have the same variance. Of these two assumptions, the assumption of equal variance is the most important one. That is because the ANOVA test is more se sensitive to deviation in that particular case. There are also some other technical details about assumptions of ANOVA, but for now we'll just talk about these three. Other things that we should note is that ANOVA is relatively sensitive to outliers. So that's why it's always a good thing to plot your data and look for outliers that could be causing problems. ANOVA is relatively robust to variations of the normal distribution if the different groups or levels in your experiment have approximately equal sample size and if there are more than 10 measurements per level. The homogeneity of variance assumption is also a bit relaxed if we have equal sample size. However, if the size of the samples for the different levels differ a lot, then it makes more of a difference if they're non-homogeneous. So this is something that we would want to look at carefully before we ran the test.